All right, so now I am awake and uh, ready to get started with the app. Right now, what we're working on is, as you can see here in the app, uh, you can see some indications on the calendar for which date we worked out. If we start a new workout, it won't update the screen. So let's add an exercise here, save that. Then you see like nothing updates here. What it should do is it should give us a workout here on the 17th, which it doesn't do. So what I have to do is I have to go out of the app, delete it, open it back up, and now it's updated and it actually shows that we worked out on the 17th. So this is something that I need to fix uh, because you really, this is not a useful app. It can't, it can't actually work like that, that you have to delete the app and then go back into it for it to update. It needs to update dynamically. As soon as you change something, it should update the, the UI. So that's what we're gonna do. Money. All right, so uh, I haven't quite been able to figure it out. Basically, there's a lot of errors that occur when I try to run this. And uh, now I have a lunch meeting that I need to go to. So uh, I'm gonna have to just uh, take a little break here and then go come back to it later. I, need, I really need to leave now. So I'm gonna go and then come back and uh, finish this off. So that was great. Got to have a quick little lunch meeting and now I'm gonna try to get back to actually working on the app. All right, so I thought I'd talk just a little bit about why I choose to use Flutter for building the app and why I don't use React Native or why I don't develop natively for the different devices. And uh, the reason that I do it personally is that uh, essentially speed. For me, it's all about the speed of Flutter, uh, both in terms of like how fast I am at actually programming in Flutter and how intuitive it is to me. And then also the perf performance of the actual app and the actual like day-to-day -day use of Flutter, I feel is a lot faster than React Native. And I've been using Flutter ever since it was released back in 2017. And I was like fairly quick on that bandwagon wagon and just like started using it for building apps. And I've been using it ever since. And for me, for some reason, I can be just super productive with Flutter. And from what I've heard, when you use React Native, you have to use a lot of like third-party libraries. I could be wrong about this, but I, from what I've understood, that's how it works. So if you want a specific type of widget, you might have to actually find a third-party library and get it from there. So that's actually like the main reason why I use Flutter. For me, it's intuitive and it's a lot faster for me to use. But then there's also the, the actual speed of the app. From what I understand, the speed of a Flutter app is gonna be a lot better than the speed of a React Native app. Maybe not really uh, noticeable by an actual user, but it is there is some differences. And one of the main differences is that uh, the React Native actually uses a JavaScript bridge to run the app, which essentially, if I understand this correctly, it essentially means that you're running almost like a web page that is designed as an app within your, or on a phone. Compare that to Flutter, which actually uses the language Dart, which is very similar to Java, again, the one that I was used to before. And it essentially converts the code to machine code to the phone and then renders each pixel uh, on the screen of the phone, which means that you have a lot more freedom, I think at least, with how you design the widgets that you create. So I guess that's like for me the reason why I use uh, Flutter, but again, I'm not an expert in any of this, so if you're considering any of these things, I would definitely recommend Flutter, especially if you come from the background of Java, but uh, it's just different ways of doing it, but both of them are pretty much good as far as I understand it. 
Uh, but to me, Flutter just seems, uh, is way more intuitive for me personally, so that's why I use it. So as you might be able to tell, my skills in data structures and algorithms isn't all there, because what I'm doing right now is actually fairly simple, it's just that I don't know it well enough to actually be able to do it properly or fast, as fast as I should. And being well versed in the topic of data structures and algorithms is actually one of the key aspects of landing a job when it comes to being interviewed for these big companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, you know, like all the big ones. And this is why I think you should check out Geeks for Geeks self-paced course on data structures and algorithms. This course is taught by one of the most credible and distinguished educators in India, along with a team of experts. They go through in depth the mathematics you need, how to master recursion, arrays, trees, sorting, strings, heaps, and really everything that you need to learn. Apart from theoretical learning, they have live projects wherein you can practice and apply your learning on real world projects. Finishing this course will help you know all about data structures and algorithms. There are already thousands of students who have benefited from this course and got their dream jobs all across the globe. So go check it out at the link in the video description and use the code CAL for a 10% discount and lifetime access to the course. I highly recommend you check it out and with this course you'll become confident in preparing for software engineering interviews with these top-notch product-based companies. All right, so um, now I've basically finished this thing, which is essentially to update the calendar anytime, anytime something changes. And so now what I've implemented is a stream builder in Flutter, which essentially basically asks or requests the database constantly almost. And as soon as something updates in the database, it basically updates the UI as well, which is what happened there. So as you saw, once I saved that workout, it basically straight away just added uh, the indication on the 15th that I'd actually worked out. And same thing here, if I delete this workout, it will automatically remove seamlessly. So delete, and now it's gone. And this has taken me so long to get that to work. All right, so now I have the app running on my phone and it actually updates dynamically or live as you do things in the app. So that's really good. That's one more thing done. One step closer to the actual release of the pre-alpha, which I feel i am probably talked about the pre-alpha release for like three months, I think. So um, I'm sorry that it takes this long, but I'm, I'm trying to actually show the real process and it takes a lot of time. As I see it right now, there's only two more things that I need to do before I can release the pre-alpha. And the first thing is I need to restructure the database a little bit because I've realized that the database is not really set up for what I want the app to become. So it works for what it is right now. But this, what you're seeing in the app right now is just like 5% probably of what the app is going to be. So the final version of the app is going to be way different. And so I need to basically set up some of that structure for the database so that I don't then have to change it later on once people have actually signed up for the app and started using it, because that would be super annoying for people, I think. So I want to set that up. And then the second thing is probably just a couple of few like last bugs that I need to fix. And then I think it'll be ready to actually release as the pre-alpha. So probably two more videos, give me two more videos, and then we're gonna have the pre-alpha release. And I've also gotten all the emails about wanting to be beta testers. Beta testers is essentially for the pre-alpha release. I've looked through a lot of them, not all of them, because there's like hundreds of them, but I really appreciate that you signed up for it if you did. And uh, I'm going to come up with some sort of way to introduce it to people because I realized I was going to just give anyone who wanted it the ability to actually test it. But now that there's probably like, I don't know if it's like two to 400, something like that, people that have emailed me about wanting to be beta testers, I've realized that I can't really have 400 people testing the app at this point. I don't even know if it will work with 400 people. I don't know how Firebase works with that. So... Uh, I'm gonna have to do like a small release first, see how that works, make sure that nothing uh, huge breaks, and then like slowly uh, release it to more and more people as I go. And I'm also starting a podcast that's coming out uh, next Sunday, I think, uh, which is gonna be uh, related to the startup and uh, where we're gonna be able to actually go a little bit more in depth and I'm gonna be able to explain actually why 
I'm doing this and what this is all about. Uh, so looking forward to releasing that. And yeah, that's the end of this video. But here's a little snippet of the podcast episode one. I was thinking about something, but I can't remember. But it was really good. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> oh, you should have been there. <laughs> you had you said something uh, during the last uh, or the past half an hour. You said the uh, the goal of your your YouTube channel is oh, yeah. to inspiration not uh, replication yeah inspiration yeah. not replication and that is such an important thing i think because a lot of people uh, i mean I'll, i watch your videos and i see what the, some all of, the of them of course all of them yes. definitely multiple times yeah yeah uh, <laughs> if you really think that something is is uh, trash yeah uh, like this conversation right now yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the first episodes yeah. they're gonna be <laughs> like Episode 100, it's still yeah. going to be like, dude, first episode is shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us 100 episodes and then we'll be fine. Yeah.